The FBI and Peace and War, ordinarily heard at this time throughout the year, is taking its usual summer vacation and will return to CBS four weeks from tonight on September 1st. Broadway's my beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Broadway, it's a promise you make to yourself in some dismal part of your life, or it's a name you say like a curse. It's a place of golden women in mirrors of chrome, or it's a beggar who will tear off a piece of his soul for a cup of coffee. It's anything you want, any time you want it, and it's My Beat. By 9 o'clock, police headquarters had settled down to its nighttime routine. So far, business was slow. I was sitting in my office straightening out the detail sheets that always accumulated on my desk. Lieutenant Clover. Good evening, sir. Well, Dr. McClure. Dr. Robbie McClure. It's a pleasure to see you. Sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lieutenant. Yeah, what's the matter? What's the matter, Doctor? You look pale. Well, I could give you all the clinical reasons for the way I look. Now... <clears throat> Now, Lieutenant... Let me get you something, Doctor. I'll no, be right... No, 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 wait, Lieutenant. Last month, there was a shooting. It, it, it's not that I want to confess to. It's the thing about... <coughs> you should know about... Last month, the murder that the police never solved. Daddy, I, I don't want that to happen to me. I don't uh, want... Dr. That... McClure. Uh, Dr. McClure. Sergeant Tartaglia. Yeah, Danny. Come here. Yeah. Well, what's the trouble, Danny? Close the door. Well, what's all... Well, Danny, what's the matter with Doc McClure? He's dead. What? Flip his coat aside. You'll see why. Oh, Danny. From the size of the wound, I'd say it was from a twenty-two fired from up close. Tartaglia. Yeah? Call downstairs and tell him about Dr. McClure. Then get a detail to find out everything you can about the doctor. Friends, relatives, bank account, everything. Right. And in the morning, I want the files on every murder that happened about 30 days ago. Unsolved murders. On my desk in the morning. Right. Good. I'll see you. Now, where are you going, Danny? I'm going to wind back McClure's life. I'm going to find out why he had to die. The great buildings of the city lean against the night in crazy, tilted angles, like lighted toys deserted by a sleepy giant. And there's the feeling that unless you walk carefully, you'll upset their insane balance. But Dr. Robbie McClure's office building was different. It sat square and solid on its haunches, and when you pressed the night buzzer, it growled at you. Well, sure, my mayor, but ain't any clover to Torbert. Canter in, me boy, canter in. Oh, same old Pippin. <laughs> no, not the same, Danny. There are bald spots in me fetlock, and I ain't so quick to break from the starting gate like I used to. From a dashing, mounted policeman to, to a flabby night watchman. Ah, that's a bit of pasture, Danny, me boy, a bit of pasture. Maybe you're wrong, Pippin. Maybe it's sweet pasture and you don't know it. Pippin, you know Dr. Robbie McClure, don't you? Sure, sure I do. A great surgeon. But, ah, what a waste, what a waste. How do you mean? Sure, he, sure he was a genius. Sure, sure, sure he'd have been a veterinarian. What else would I mean, Danny? What else, of course. You know what time he left his office tonight? I have, I do. I have it right here in my book. Now, will I take a look? Oh, yeah. Here it is. 8.40 in the P.M. Eight, was he alone? No, no. He was in the company of the sleekest, prettiest, richest looking filly. It's been my pleasure since I cavorted the devoted police. Did you have her signature? Oh, no. She was a doctor's patient. Or guest, or, or, or best bet for tomorrow. Night watchmen are discreet, Danny. Some ladies, they don't ask to sign out. Well, ask them from now on, Pippet. Huh? I mean it. Have you got any idea where they went? No, Danny, but they took a cab from that hack stand out there in front. Did you see whose cab they took? Yes, I did, I did. I opened the door for them. They took Irv Newman's cab. If you want nerve, you'll probably find him at his home. I know those hackish skittles, you know. Well, thanks, Pippet. If you get a lump of sugar in the mail, it's from me. What do you want? Well, 
Hey, it's Danny. Hi, Irv. <laughs> hey, Rose, it's Danny. Who? Danny, Danny Clover of New York's finest. Uh, so he's going to help me wash the dishes already? Uh, pay no attention to Rose, Danny. She's moody tonight. Come on in, come on in. Thanks, Irv. Now, sit down, Danny, sit down. Uh, Irv, I... Uh, I offer you something, a glass of tea, a cold beer. I got it. How about one of Rose's blintzes, huh? Hey, Rose! Uh, never mind, Irv. Don't bother Rose. What's the bother? Even if she's moody, she can't rassle you up a blink. Oh, I'm here on business, Irv. Some other time. Oh, business? Hey, Rose! Huh? Come here. Huh? Shut off Caruso. Huh? Make quiet Caruso. What? You, Caruso? Caruso. Now we'll talk, Danny. What kind of business brings you down here to Orchard Street, the land of the Knish and the Bagel? Uh, Pippet told me you drove Dr. McClure somewhere tonight, Irv. Where, where'd you drive him? Uh, Park Avenue. Yeah, here's the address, Danny. I was just making out my records. Oh, thanks. Was he alone? At first, no. Uh, later, yes. Translation? First, he is with a doll. Oh. Uh, lean over, Danny. Rose shouldn't hear. A Zoftic type doll. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Then he is without the doll. Around 50, she opens the door of the hack and slips out into the traffic. McClure tells me to keep going. I think they had an argument. What about? Danny. I'm the type to eavesdrop. Especially when they shut that glass panel. The address Irv Newman gave me was a study in millionaire respectability. Scrub Park Avenue, Brownstone. The butler took my hat and sighed and told me it was all right to go down the corridor into the living room if I tiptoed. I did. Then all of a sudden it hit me, the light from a couple hundred bulbs set in a crystal chandelier. And when I finally squinted through it, I couldn't quite believe it. It wasn't the size of the room. That was only about a hundred yards long. It was the walls, from ceiling to floor and all the way, the walls were decked with murals, Mother Goose murals. Paintings of every fairy tale and nursery rhyme character in the book. And on the floor, smack dab between Marjorie Dawn and her seesaw and Jack and his beanstalk, sat a man. He was wearing three things. A goatee, a full dress, and a beanie. Three propeller type. Well, hello there. And a hello to you. My butler said your name was Danny Clover. But my butler lies. Uh, what is your name, sir? Uh, Danny Clover. Uh, you see what I mean? Uh, grab a toy out of the toy box, sir, and sit down. Uh, Mr. Fletcher... Here, I'm... here, here, take my latest product. Child psychologists claim it's remarkable for improving the coordination and tactile responses of a four-year-old. Really? Has it helped you? Immeasurably. We place the ball in the cup, so. Uh-huh. Then we squeeze this lever, so. Yep. Then we catch the ball. Oops, we missed. Oh, I guess we overestimated ourselves. Now, Mr. Fletcher... Oh, well, call me Fletch. Don't stand on ceremony just because I'm the president. Oh, does Margaret know? Huh? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I mean the president of the Fletcher Toy Company. I make toys for children, sir. I bring gay bits of sunshine into their otherwise drab little lives. And, as you see, I test my products before I market them. Incidentally, sir, what is your business? Police. Police? Police! Uh, stop here screaming. You'll wake up Snow White over there. Sir, what right have you to be in my house? Well, technically none, Mr. Fletcher, but there's a little matter of... A matter of invasion of privacy. What do you want? Was Dr. McClure here this evening? Dr. Robin McClure? In a word, yes. Why was he here? I'm his patient. Is that a good medicinal reason? Simply sterile. Uh, are you a sick man, Mr. Fletcher? You don't look sick? Dr. McClure says I'm a hypochondriac. But he gives me pills. I take them. They make me feel better. Ergo... I must have been sick before I took the pills. One more thing, Mr. Fletcher. Who was with Dr. McClure? I beg your pardon? Or maybe she stayed in the cab that brought him here. Who was she, Mr. Fletcher? Oh, <laughs> that one. <laughs> yes. I peeked out the window and saw her waiting in the cab. Oh, beautiful, isn't she? That was striking. One of the most striking women I ever saw. I blew at the top propeller in Fletcher's beanie, and then the butler came in and ushered me out in the downdraft. Lying must have been one of the little games they played in that million-dollar house. Fletch said the butler lied. Then Fletcher lied about a girl he hadn't seen, a girl who was a question mark or an answer in the murder of Dr. Robbie McClure. If I was going to wind back McClure's life, I needed some sleep. All that got wound up were the sheets in my bed. And in the morning, I started it all over again in the good doctor's office. 
You're early. The doctor hasn't come in yet. You'll have to wait. Everything about her was anonymous. The white shoes, the white stockings, the starched white uniform, the starched white face, and the mouth, scarlet and thin, that she wore like a ribbon of merit. You're a new patient? Fill out this card, please. Mm, not a patient. The police. Lieutenant Danny Clover, Broadway Special Detail. Oh, Dr. McClure asked you to come here? Well, you could say it that way. I'm here to investigate his death. What? You mean something happened to him? <laughs> he died in my office. He was murdered. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Oh, I'm sorry you had to be told like that, but we don't always have time to be gentle. You were his nurse, Miss... Elliot. Julie Elliot. I have an agglutination test to make on some RH negative blood, Lieutenant. May I do that while you investigate? Yeah, go right ahead. Where do I find the doctor's patient records? In that metal file box. You've been with the doctor long, Miss Elliot? Three years. Pardon me, Lieutenant. I need that slide. It's the usual question. Did he have any enemies? You knew him. What do you think, Lieutenant? Doesn't matter what I think. He was a fine man. Generous and kind. I need that microphone. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Uh, this is strange. In the patient's file? What strange, Lieutenant? This card has a name and a date. All the other cards are filled with case histories. All this has is a name and a date. Dorothy Rivers, June 29th. Isn't that strange, Miss Elliot? The files were the doctor's responsibility. He had his own way of keeping. Then you don't know anything about a patient named Dorothy Rivers or this date. Nothing, Lieutenant. May I take this with me? You're the police. You do anything you like. I'll have to turn the lights out now, Lieutenant, for the test. Go ahead, Miss Elliot. Go ahead. Uh, this will do for now. And thank you, Miss Elliot. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Miss Rivers? Miss Dorothy Rivers? Dr. McClure's office. We advise a rest, a long rest in a quiet place. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. If murder should suddenly explode in your face, you'd know how Casey, crime photographer, feels tonight in the drama titled Sellout. That's exactly what happens to Casey. A routine newspaper case suddenly erupts into a savage murder mystery which requires the sharpest thinking and fastest action of the crime photographer to solve. Crime photographer is yours for the listening every Thursday evening, as is the other thriller, Escape. Tonight, Escape brings you Leiningen versus the Ant. A top story of harrowing adventure on a top program. Remember Escape and Crime Photographer tonight over most of these same CBS stations. Now, back to Broadway's My Beat. There's this thing about Broadway. It can tickle you under the chin and make clucking noises, or it can slap you hard across the mouth and laugh. Either way, you get hurt. Right now, the receiving end of the slap was the police department for various and sundry unsolved murders. And the laugh, the big laugh, the cold laugh was that a man named Dr. Robbie McClure had come to my office to die, and I didn't know who'd killed him. I sat at my desk at headquarters tearing the tabloids into a noose of paper dolls when Sergeant Tartaglia opened the door and with a fine Italian flourish lay a thick paper-bound file in front of me. For you, my lieutenant. Your memoir, Sergeant? What is it? Not only what you ask for, a file on one of our more recent unsolved murders. Get it out of here. Get it out of my sight. Huh? Hey, Danny, you sick or something? Oh, all right. All right, leave it. I also have here in my pocket the dope you wanted on Dr. Robbie McClure. Here, read it. Uh, talk it to me, son. I'm sick of reading. There were some interesting items, Danny, about the good doctor. Item. Friends, numerous and friendly, all with alibis. 
Item. Relatives, none. Uh, the doctor was a lonesome man. Are your wife and kids, Tartaglia? Oh, great, Danny, just great. Hey, you should see the latest. Little Christina. I bet she's a doll. Go on with the items. Huh? Oh, yeah. Item. And this is the one I think will interest you, Danny. On June 30th, Dr. Robbie McClure made a deposit in the Corn Exchange Bank in Bronxville. 10,000 crisp, cool, clean dollars. June 30th, huh? Now you can talk to me about the recent unsolved murder. As follows. A man named Martin James was murdered in his Sutton Place penthouse apartment at a party night of June 29th. Yeah? He was asked to step outside, and he was murdered. Martin had a gun. He fired one shot. The bullet from Martin James' gun was never found. So we figured it took off across First Avenue. But, Taglia, there's a doctor's patient card over on the table over there. Tell me what it says on it. Sure, Danny, sure. It says... Dorothy Rivers, June 29th. See a name like that on the James guest list? Ah, wait a minute, Danny. Yeah, yeah here it is, Dan. Dorothy Rivers, in the alphabetical list with a lot of other girls. Is your address there? All the girls have the same address. What? Say that again. They all have the same address. The Tony Seville Model Agency. Tartaglia, here's a fin. Buy your doll, Christina, a doll or something. Oh, thanks, Danny, thanks. But there's something I think you should know. About Christina? About Dorothy Rivers. The records say she never showed up at that party. She was never there at all. Tony Seville paid rent for his model agency in the Empire State Building. For this, he received the privilege of maintaining a ten-room suite on the 40th floor and decorating it with orchids and genuine neutrils. The other decorations were too numerous to mention, delicate shadings of blonde and brunette. And when they crossed their legs, the silk whispered. I started to whisper back, but a scented haze with magenta fingertips beckoned me into an inner office. She closed the door behind her, and all I was left with was a pork barrel in a double-breasted pinstripe named Tony Seville. My secretary whispered you are a policeman. How have I trespassed? I parked my car incorrectly, perhaps. I forgot to curb my dog. Let's stop rubbing noses, huh? I beg your pardon? Let's put it this way, simple and blunt. There's some questions I want you to answer for me. You must have a dull profession asking questions. Very well. Ask a question. Mr. Seville, your agency supplied a half dozen models to a party at the home of Martin James. Said party a little over a month ago, June 29th. Said home, a penthouse on Sutton Place, right? Possibly right. However, don't underline your details with a sneer. My agency furnishes models as decorative baubles to any social function. One of your decorations on the evening I'm interested in was named Dorothy Rivers. How do I get in touch with her? You're a detective? Detect. What's her address, Seville? May I suggest a dragnet detective or any of the numerous machinations you police are oh so adept at. Her address, Seville. Where do I find her? You should be told. We only give the model's address to an approved client. I don't approve of you. Look, kid, sometimes I can forget I'm a cop. I can forget right now. I I think you mean it. Yeah, try being cozy for one more second. I don't know where Dorothy Rivers is. I haven't seen her a month. You can do better than that. The uh, day after the party, she phoned. She said she was going on a vacation. She... Uh... You're doing fine, Seville. Keep it up. There's nothing more. I tried to get in touch with her several times since. She checked out of the hotel. She left no forwarding address. You're telling the truth, aren't you, Seville? The truth is this, as far as I know and care. Dorothy Rivers could be dead. Beginning at the 40th floor, I picked petals off a tired daisy. At the 38th, Dorothy Rivers was dead. 37th, she wasn't dead. 36th, dead. 35th, not dead. I don't remember how it came out because when I got off at the ground floor and walked into the yellow heat of 34th Street, a character stopped me by tapping me lightly on the leg with the front bumper of his cab. The character was the character named Irv Newman. Don't look so scared, Danny. Brakes I got. I could stop this cab on a thin latke. Latke schmatke, so long as I got my health. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, you're charming, Danny. Absolutely charming. Hey, told me at headquarters I'd find you around here. I got something for you. I want a rose of splinters? Maybe better than that yet. You know that girl he was asking me about, the one I picked up with Dr. McClure, the professional man? What about her? I spotted her for you, Danny. Where? Tell me where. So let me tell you. Happens I got a friend, Danny, a truck driver. He's a teacher of a fellow. His name is Clem. Every morning gives me a push with the truck so I can start this lousy hat. Where did you spot the girl, Irv? So I'm telling you. 
While Clem is pushing me with his truck and I'm gliding along in my hack like in a gondola, I see this girl coming out of the building. What building? 6 West 23rd Street. So I turn around, I wave to Clem. He should stop already. Yeah? I... Danny! Danny, didn't let me finish! <laughs> Miss Rivers? Who are you? I want to talk to you, Miss Rivers. By what right? I don't know you. Get away from here. Get away. Let's go inside, Miss Rivers. Who are you? What do you want? I'm Danny Clover. I'm a police detective, Miss Rivers. Been through a lot to get to you. We get along a lot better if you just settle down. Why do you want to see me? I've read somewhere that grief can make a woman even more lovely. You look like you've been grieving. Don't be clever with me. I'm sick of clever men. Maybe I can help you. You, a policeman? Me, a policeman. Well, it's all over now, isn't it, Mr. Clover? Mm, Just about. You want to know what happened at Martin James' party, isn't that it? The guest list said you were invited, but you weren't checked off. That mean you weren't there? I was there. Through the back entrance, Mr. Clover, because... Because he said that was the way it should be done. Who? What should have been done that way? Look, look, Mr. Clover, I'll tell you what happened. I owe it to myself to tell you what happened. I'm tired of pain, pain, pain. That's it, huh? Blackman. Let me tell you from the beginning what happened. Perhaps you'll even believe me. You'd be surprised, Miss Rivers. Policemen can believe the truth. Martin James was a man who made investments in all sorts of deals, a kind of silent partner. One of the partners was a man named Fletcher. Man with a goatee? He manufactured toys, Mr. Clover. I went to the party with him. Mr. Clover. What's the matter? Mr. Clover! The window! He's gone. Who was it? Who did you see? I. Uh, uh... Oh, maybe you should have told me his name, Miss Rivers. Now you don't owe anybody anything. <laughs> Coroner, I say it's a shame, Danny. Such a beautiful girl. Shame. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. What I've been waiting for is your report. Yeah, Dorothy Rivers. Age about 24. Bullet ended left sternum, pierced pericardium. That's the heart, Danny. Hmm. Dead on arrival. Dead all? This girl was shot once before. She's got a healing wound that... Well, it looks mighty like a bullet wound. It's right here, Danny. Yeah. Yeah, that makes it all add up. That makes it add up just fine, Corner. Neat. Real, real neat. Hello, Fletcher. This is a friend, Fletcher. The payoff goes on just the same. Tonight, kid, 9 o'clock. So long, Fletcher. It took me 10 minutes to get to the Park Avenue palace that Fletcher had built out of psychological toys for kids. Across the street, I took a plant behind a fat, uniformed doorman who kept looking at me out of the corner of his fat eyes as if he were terribly sorry a thing like me had ever happened under his gilt-fringed canopy. At 8.30, the lights in Fletcher's crystal chandelier began to go out in sections. In five minutes, he was on the street, hailing a cab. I tossed a nickel to my fat doorman, hailed a cab of my own, and tailed Fletcher to an office building I'd been in once before. I watched him slip Pippa to Bill and then walk down the corridor to a self-service elevator. I thought it'd be nice if he had company on his lonesome ride. He didn't. Police! Why am I constantly surrounded by police? Maybe because you bring sunshine into my drab life, Fletcher. You know how to work this thing? Well, of course. It's nothing but a toy. Uh, allow me, anyway. It's the fourth floor you want, isn't it? Well, no, 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 not at all. Humor I... me, Fletcher. Let's make it four. down this hall, 438, Dr. McClure's office. That's where you want to go, isn't it, Mr. Fletcher? Yeah, there are obviously some titillating gyrations going on in that mechanical policeman's brain of yours. You will reveal them to me, please? I was waiting for you to ask me that in just that way. Uh, here we are. After you, Mr. Fletcher. Oh, thank you. Now I reveal the payoff money, Fletcher. Give it to me. Ah, uh, of course. I see. I see. I thought it was curious that I should have to keep paying blackmail to a dead man. 
Dr. McClure is dead, isn't he? The money, Mr. Fletcher. It's hard for me to say please. Well, here you are. Thousand dollars. Uh, you want it weekly, I presume, just as I paid it before? That's cheap, isn't it, Fletcher, to buy out the electric chair? That's quite a toy, too, I hear. Yes, yes, quite, quite. Uh, then you know, of course, that Dorothy Rivers and I murdered Martin James. Uh -huh. Oh, he deserved it, you know. He swindled me out of a good deal of money. What was Dorothy Rivers to you? Uh, now, nah, now, nah. you're talking like a policeman again. Dorothy Rivers was a toy, expensive and fragile. It made her all the more desirable. That and the fact that I could make her do anything I liked. Could you bring her back to life? What? Hey. No. Don't get up, gentlemen. As long as I was eavesdropping, it makes me less of a lady. Now, that gun's not becoming either, Nurse Elliot. Put it away. Put it away, my dear. Uh, toys like that make me nervous. I prefer this pose. Now, what were you saying, Lieutenant? Now that you're here, I've got even more to say. As a nurse, I'm a humanitarian, Lieutenant. We've got a minute more saying time. A man should never lie under the circumstances, huh? And if I told you this, if I told you that you were the blackmailer instead of Dr. McClure, what would you say? I'd say you were telling the truth. What? Then I've been paying all that money to this... Temper, temper, Mr. Fletcher. Well, Dr. McClure took the initial 10000 all right, but the nurse here kept right on blackmailing you and Miss Rivers in the doctor's name. McClure flounded out, so he had to die. All through, Lieutenant. Not quite, nurse. After the blackmail, you had to kill Miss Rivers because she was about to talk to me. Now, Lieutenant... One more thing. If you kill me, the payoff stops. Consider it, Miss Elliot. I got $1,000 in my pocket. Half yours, half mine. It could go on and on. We could still make Fletcher pay. Think about it, Miss Elliot. Put the money on the table, Lieutenant. Half yours, half mine. All right. On the table. Thanks. I'll take mine, Lieutenant. Now. Yeah, now, Miss Elliot. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Put your you out, nurse. Drop it, throw up the oh, gun. Yeah, thanks. I'll lift it up for you, Lieutenant. I'll get the gun. Lift this, Fletcher. <laughs> Got any smelling salts for Fletcher, nurse? It took three police officers to carry Nurse Elliot away. She tore at their faces and screamed in a language she hadn't picked up in medical books. Fletcher? He was different. He settled himself in the Black Mariah pulled out a solid gold yo-yo and played with it all the way down to headquarters. Broadway's happy now. It's got on the carnival clothes it wears every night and the midway boils with roustabouts and yokels and hurdy-gurdy sounds. It's a jack-in-the-box and it's a clown. It's a shining girl on horseback or it's a geek with no arms, no legs and no heart. It's Broadway. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, is produced and directed by Gordon T. Hughes, with script by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Musical direction is by Lud Gluskin. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for Broadway's My Beat. America can be proud. America is proud of the young men of our armed forces. Painstakingly trained as specialists in many fields, these servicemen will be the leaders in tomorrow's civilian life. Educational advantages open to today's servicemen are unparalleled if you can qualify. Look into the volunteer enlistment program now. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Brought to you by RadioClassics.com. All copyrights are the property of their respective owners.